All right, I have this Ford 8N carburetor here. I'm gonna start this assembly, check this thing out. Again, I wasn't able to see um, if this was working properly, but I just took a look at it. Didn't look like it was looked at or maintained for a very long time. The tractor's been sitting for roughly five years, so I figured I'd disassemble it, give it a good cleaning at least. So let's get after it. Looks like I just use a flathead screwdriver for a lot of this disassemble. I'm gonna start cleaning it. Just got one more flathead on this to split this carburetor open here. As you can see, yeah, so bad. I'm really excited to get into this and see how bad it is in here. I do have a small rebuild kit, just a repair kit from Country Line over Track Supply. So I'll see how good this thing works for this. Far good things. I'm glad it was so easy to get. All right, I'm gonna clean this area up here so that when I start disassembling this, I can see all the parts laid out nicely. Probably put some white cloth down or some paper towels down so we can see it, but it took me a while to get this thing split here. I haven't actually officially opened it up. I wanted to put it on camera, but it was a real pain to get this off. It was sitting in the cold for a long time. You can see the marble on this. Um, this is just really, really, really bad here. Let me see if I can get this open one hand here. Curious what's gonna pop out of this thing. Oh boy. Oh yeah, he said, oh, it'll run. That'll run nicely probably, yeah. I don't think so. Okay. You gotta clean that up. That still moves. It's just like the old gasket here. Very bad. Pretty crusty. All right, let's get to disassembling and clean this bad boy up. I'll clean this exterior up too. Wow, that looks so bad. Oh my. And again, this is a country line kit here. So we have marble, um, I think it's Schwebler, Marvel Schwebler. I know that was the, at least for the 8N, I think it was for the 9N, 2N, 8NN. Could be wrong. All right, I have the gasket material off this top part. I'm going to clean this up. Usually what I do is just take an old blade and go through this um, nice. Once I get a lot of it off, I'll go through and wet it down. Usually a degreaser or car cleaner, something like that, whatever I have laying around. And I'm gonna scrape the rest of this off. I got this top one pretty good, or the bottom part, sorry, pretty good. After that, I'll go through and I'll clean out of the inside and start disassembling some more pieces. I did take the float and um, the needle out of here. Okay, got the interior of these cleaned up decently. Still not in the best shape. This is a little bit worse. I'm gonna try to kind of clean these out a little bit more. I'm gonna try to scrape these edges out of here. Yeah, there's just still some buildup I'm gonna get. Oh, that look, I don't know if that's broken. That does not look like it should be like that now that I notice it. Huh. Oh boy, that's not good. Let me do some more investigating on that does not look good. We have this here. This one came out a lot better this side. I want to replace that um, seat. Clean all these out. And take this adjust this adjustment out as well. This adjustment screw. It's pretty it's pretty stuck in there. But I'm going to take a wire wheel to the outside. Usually I'll coat this in some kind of oil. I just did our 656. I did a carb. And whatever I need to replace, I just replaced that. Some gaskets in it, some seals. Um, and it, it, you know, just flash rusted over. So I don't want that to happen to this uh, carb. So I will end up definitely painting this or coating it somehow. But I'll probably just coat it in oil and leave it in here for now so it doesn't um, rust up on me and just decide. I'm not sure what they'd look like out of the factory. 
Now, I think they were painted, but could be wrong. So I'll just try to do whatever was factory on that. So I'll give it a look. Looks like it probably was painted before, but you know, shoddy job there. Is there some red on there? <laughs> I couldn't tell if any of this was original. I doubt it's original. That doesn't make any sense. The, this uh, previous owner had this from the early 90s. So I'm sure he replaced some things from then. I wanted to show my progress so far. So this is some cleaning of the interior and the exterior of this car. It's actually pretty good. A couple stains, or a couple pitting, pitting and stains, but a lot of these will get, get taken out. Going over the top, this looks a lot worse than what it does in person, actually. It looks a little bit better. Some of these tight spots are hard to get, so I have to use a something smaller or, or a brush to get in there. And um, I'm actually out of carb cleaner here, sadly. <laughs> I'm gonna end it here until I get some more. Um, but this one came out a lot better. I mean, I didn't get to replace everything. I took took both of these, this bolt out and this screw out, cleaned all those up. <laughs> didn't take that off for the choke. I might though. I think I'd like to replace this in here. It doesn't look that good. So I might actually take the, uh, disassemble that. But it looks a lot better than before. No more cobwebs. So really, really, really nice shape here. And this inside, much more to be desired. But I'll clean it up. I'm going to get a wire wheel in there and clean that up a little bit. I'm probably going to end up soaking this as well in um, some type of uh, cleaner. All right, degreaser or cleaner. See if that um, does anything. So, all right, on to step two. See you guys soon. All right, I had these soaking overnight in the solution. I just wiped them all off. I don't think there's much more I want to do. It does look really, honestly, really good. There's not too much more I want to do. I'm going to clean out all of these with the my compressor. I'm going to spray all of these out. I was going to replace this um, for the choke here, at least the butterfly, but I don't think I'm going to. That works really well. It functions well. It didn't come out as clean as I'd like, this actual butterfly here, but it seems to be functioning just fine. Because I'm going to spray these out with a compressor. I just let it soak in pretty much a degreaser, um, but everything seems to be functioning really well. I did take this fuel line out. I just used a little forage crescent wrench. Put it on it has a rounded bottom but it pretty it comes out pretty pretty loosely pretty not too bad um so i'm gonna make sure i always want to clean that out i'm glad there's a fuel filter little end on that so that's a really nice piece that's a nice touch um that's helpful it is a hard line on this so i don't have any other filter um but yeah that came out really well i'm going to clean these patches out get it wiped down, and then I'm gonna reassemble. Like I said, I took these two out, took both of these, this bolt and screw out, clean those passages up. Everything else, I'm gonna take this seat out. I just have to find something that's a little bit, a little bit wider than my uh, flathead. I might have a wide one somewhere. So, we back. This took a lot of persuasion, but I finally got this seat out of here. I'm going to take this out and replace it. I, I wanted to. I didn't think it was bad. Um, there was some gunk in there. There's still a little bit. But I have a replacement, so I figured I would do it. Why not while I'm in here? Um, but it was really difficult to get out. So just keep in mind, if you are working on this, a typical flathead is going to be just a little bit too short um, to, to work in there. So you need something bigger. I ended up using um, this, really a wood chisel. Um, I used a couple of the things that I tried and a lot of um, WD-40 just to get that unstuck. It was pretty tight after all those years. All right, so I'm going to get this out, put a new one in, and start to uh, reassemble here. So at the bottom and the top here, I did just um, go through the air compressor and spray everything out one more time. I did get that um, seat out with its seal and replace that. It was pretty hard on there, so I just figured I'd replace it. Um, you know, both, both shafts look pretty good, so I'm not going to replace those. I'm just going to keep them in case I would need to or need them. I would love to replace really this, like, butterfly in here. Um, 
if I can find one, you know, it's hard to get that without buying a, a more of a premium kit. Um, it looks like it's going to work fine. It just looks ugly. <laughs> I would probably like to take that off and just really give it a good cleaning. Um, I should do that, but I'm not going to do it yet. Once I get this thing running, maybe I'll do that, um, you know, next year or something like that. Pretty much what I did was, was the basics, just making sure it was clean and it's going to function okay. So now I'm going to start to reassemble. I'm going to put that seat back on there, the needle seat, the float, and then start to work with um, the needles on there. So the fuel and the air needle and get the gaskets on there. So let's continue. All right, so here's our new right here. This should look a lot better um, if I can get that to focus. that in here now it looks a little different it might have a couple more extra threads than the previous that previous one's definitely not original too by the way um, clearly that'd be very impressive but oh yeah it'll seat nicely on there I'm not gonna make it too tight you want it to make it tight where it's um, you know it's gonna hold it's not gonna leak but you don't want to make it so tight you could easily damage this brass fitting which is really what I did when I took it out although I knew I was gonna I wasn't gonna reuse it so I didn't really care too much but I did want to get it out of there, which I really wasn't able to do for a while okay, so we have this and here's our new needle I don't really like the tops this way. I like the old school way better, but it's probably good just to replace it. There was a, quite a bit of gunk. I was able to clean the other one, but still, I was just replace it and um, hope it works out good. And if not, you know, I'll, I'll keep the other one. I keep all the old parts just in case. So I'll put that in there as well. I got that seat tightened down nice and snug. Okay, so that's what this should look like. I should pop it on nicely. So I'll put the float on now. All right, so I have the float on now. I did give that a spray down with some carb cleaner. I did check it too. So I just sat it in a bowl. Usually you can just get a cereal bowl or any bowl you have or mug or cup. Fill it with water just to make sure it floats. You could do it with gasoline. You probably sh should do it with gasoline, but it's expensive. So <laughs> I used an Xbox thing, some water, made sure it float, which it did fine cleaned it off, sprayed it down, and voila, good as new. So that's going to work out pretty good. I didn't test to see what our drop is, but it actually looks pretty good. I'll, I'll definitely get that calculation, but it, it should be fine. Um, it wasn't stuck or anything like that when I did disassemble this, so I don't think it was cut on the walls or it was stuck in any fuel or varnish. It looks like it was, it was dry, and it's just been sitting in some spiders. So... That should be good. So I have that. I'm going to end up putting um, our fuel needle in there and start to assemble um, a couple other pieces to this that I'll show and get our gaskets on here. So we're, we're right on our way. And don't forget, when you are putting this back together, there is a seal that goes in here. So they do send that to you. I did have to look. They do send you a seal. It's do send you a new needle um, for both the fuel and the air. So take advantage. Just clean. I do clean mine up. I'll save them. But if they give me new ones, I'll definitely put those in. So I'll throw those together. So that's it for this top half. I did have to reuse one spring. They didn't have the spring for the air um, needle there. So I had to just clean off and reuse that. But it looks pretty good. Very clean inside. Make sure you keep that needle in there. Make sure that doesn't fall out. It can easily happen. So let me um, just put this jet on the bottom. We'll get it just one final cleaning. And we will put our gasket in and reassemble this. And I've noticed on a lot of carburetors, especially most IH, that these jets are 3 8 This one is also 3 8 So just keep that in mind. You don't need a 3 8 Just, um, you know, something that's long. Uh, so you can fit it over top of this inlet. Um, so just keep that in mind. So I'm going to tighten that down. Just make it snug, not really tight, just snug. 
Um, there is a seal in there, so make sure you replace the seal or just keep the old one. I didn't have an extra one in the kit, sadly, so this one was still pretty good. Cleaned it up a little bit. It's a little dark, but it should work fine. I'll keep an eye on it. So quick look before reassembly. We're gonna have our gaskets here. I'm gonna put these together. I'm not gonna put any gasket sealing on this. I don't really think we're gonna need to, but I'll check to make sure once I put some feel to it, make sure it's okay. One final look. Looks a lot better. It's gonna look great. I'll put it back together. I'm really excited to get this project wrapped up. Okay, scratch that. A little different than the IH. You gotta put this gasket on first, so I had to take the float off press it in there nicely, and then reassemble that. So keeping out to do that, <laughs> not something I thought of. Now it should go together. All right, so back together finally, that's great. It popped in together real nice. Four flathead screws, snug them up. Took this top old gasket off of the manifold, removed that, cleaned that up, and I'm gonna put a new one on there. And I'm gonna put the uh, fuel inlet here clean that all up. I'm going to sl slap that in there, make sure that's tight, and we should be good. All right, so thanks for sticking with me here. This is all good to go back together. Both of these adjustment screws, the fuel and the air, you know, it's, it's tough. I'm going to do about a turn and a half out on both, so I'll put, I'll seat both down. Uh, not too snug, but just seat them both down until there's some good resistance. A turn and a half out and I'll go from there and I'll adjust from that point on so that sounds about right sounds about normal for what you hear every track is a little different so that's what I'm going to do but it actually turned out really 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 well from what it was again I'm going to give this a nice paint job eventually here um, just make sure it works and you know, I really like it that was that was really fun so thanks for sticking with me